What's going on? Welcome back to Splunk 3 Room. In this room, or in this video, we're going to carry on the upcoming tasks. In this video, we're going to go over task 5, more AWS events. This task is kind of connected to the task number 3. Connected in the sense of the concepts, not in the sense of the questions or the answers. Definitely the answers and the questions are not connected, but the concepts are related to each other. So if you haven't done task 3, go ahead and do task 3 or watch the video uh, on or watch my walkthrough on doing task 3 and then you can start with task 5. So task 5. See we have uh, 5 questions. The questions revolve around understanding Amazon Web Service access keys and identity access management. So in order to answer the questions, take a look first at the uh, links created here in the uh, room and then you can start answering the questions so you can uh, understand what you're doing. R right. So let's get started. The first one, what IAM user access key generates the most distinct errors when attempting to access IAM resources? So there is a, there is a user on the AWS trying to access resources uh, and uh, regardless of their attempt to access the resource, regardless of the result they are trying, they are attempting to access and as a result they are generating errors which means they are not granted access successfully to the resource they are trying to access. Uh, so here these are key terms or key concepts to understand from the question in order to answer, uh, in order to provide the answer. Let's go to Splunk. So let me first grab the first. So the command is, okay, let me first grab, okay, so grab this. The first thing is setting the source type. The source type in this case is cloud trail because it contains all of the access attempts of all the users. Next, we need to craft the rest of the command. Now we're given the question that a user, an IIM user. So the user type is IIM and they are trying to access a resource without success. So let's look <coughs> in the interesting fields to see if there is a field that specifies the user type. So if you scroll down, there is a field called user type and the value is IIM user, which is exactly what we want. So click on that. So by clicking on that, we add the user type exactly to the query and we are presented with 5,450 events. Now let's take a look at the interesting fields more and see if there is um, something about the uh, uh, error, error names or error codes or error source. So see here we have error type and we have uh, error codes, <coughs> we have success and several other values. So since the user is trying to access and generating errors, which means that the attempt or the error code is not success. So what we can do here, we can put exclamation mark, uh, meaning that we want to look at all the error codes that don't equal to success. So here we change the query and we end up with 1040 events. If you look at the source, uh, no, if you scroll down and take a look at username, user identity, access, we have the access key ID here, we have 28 access key ID. So it means we have, to, we have to filter more in order to narrow down the values or the results. So we have event source here. The event source is the kind of resource that is generating the error. So here we have EC2, S3, and IIM. Since we're talking about identity and access management, we specify the event source as IIM. So now we end up with 17 events, which is pretty good. Now, if you scroll down to check on the user identity access ID, as you can see, we have three access IDs. The count is, uh, as a descending order starts from this one with nine count, nine counts and ends with this one with two counts. 
So maybe you will say the answer is this one. But before we have to sort the results and we have to understand and make sure that if you check at the error message, here we have, you can see we have several error messages and every one or every message relates to different key. So what we can do here, we can just use a stats, DC, distinct count, and then we choose error message. Actually, it is here. So here we put, we uh, use the stats function to distinctively count the error messages, how many error messages we have. And we sort them by the access ID. So we want to see what is the uh, what is what is the access ID that is generating the most error messages? We click on search. So here we have the counts, as you can see, and the second one, the second key, is generating five error messages, which is the answer. Here, next question. But accidentally commits AWS access keys to an external code repository. Shortly after, he receives a notification from AWS that the account had been compromised. What is the support case ID that Amazon opens on his behalf? So we, but, uh, you know, they committed the uh, access keys to GitHub repository and the access keys, this is the access key. Um, and when you, uh, you know, when you leak the access keys to outside resources other than AWS, AWS considers that as an account compromise, so they would send you a notification to your email that your account may be compromised and they create a case for you. So to find out what is the case ID that Amazon has sent to Bud when they committed the access keys to an external code repository. So here we're looking... Uh, to find out the answer within emails. So if you check at the hint, it is telling you to use the SMTB as a source type. So here we change the source type, stream SMTB. And we make sure to specify the data set. Search. So we have 800 emails, around 900 approximately. So let's search for the keyword case. And we have only one event, which is what we want. If you take a look at the email, as you can see, the sender is Amazon Web Services. And the sender email is no reply. The subject is Amazon Web Service new support case. And you can see here the case ID. Third one, AWS access keys consist of two parts. An access key ID, which is this one, or this, and a secret access key. What is the secret access key of the key that was leaked to the external code repository? So you want to find out the secret access key for that key that was leaked to the external repository. So we are still in the question number two. And we have to find out what is the secret access key. So let's look at the email Amazon has sent to Bud and see what is the context on that. So starting from here, Amazon Web Services has, yeah, dear AWS customer, AWS account is compromised. Please review the following notice and take immediate action to secure your account. Your security is important to us. We have become aware that AWS key, as you can see here, belonging to IAM user web admin, along with the corresponding secret key is publicly available online at, and here, as you can see, they referred you to the URL that contains the credentials. So let's highlight the URL and access it. Upon accessing the URL, you see here details about the access key, the access key ID, and the secret access key. Just copy that and provide the answer. The fourth question, using the leaked key, which is this one or this one. The adversary makes an unauthorized attempt 
to create a key for a specific resource. What is the name of that resource? Answer guidance, only one word. So basically, someone uh, saw the access keys here and they're trying to use the access key to access resources. Because with every resource in the AWS, you, if you want to access a resource, you have to have an access key and a secret access key. So the adversary is trying to use these keys to access a resource. We have to find out what exactly that resource. So we go back and the source type will be cloud trail, of course. Since we're looking for logs, access logs, we look in cloud trail. So we have around 6,571. Let's get, let's get back to the question. Using the leaked key, okay, let's specify now if there's a field that specifies the key value. We can specify it ourselves. So if I take it from here directly, and instead you are you can you can find it here, you know, use that access key here. We are just specifying the value to be the value of the access key we have just found. Now we just filter the events, the access log events that contain this access key. Back to the question. What is the name of that resource? Okay, let's take a look. We have nine events. If you look at the first one, we have access denied attempt and the resource, as you can see, web admin is not authorized to perform IAM get user on resource user web admin. User here, null web admin. Okay, as you can see, every time we have the same resource, but we have to be sure which one is the answer. So let's get back. Using the leaked key, adversary makes an authorized attempt to create a key. So let's look in the interesting fields to see if there is an event that specifies the uh, event name or event type, whatever. Event type, event name. Yeah, in event name, create access key. You click on that. Indeed, we have been able to filter the events. We only have one, and the resource is null web admin. Here. Last one. Using the leaked key, adversary makes an unauthorized attempt to describe an account. So previously they were trying to create an access key. Here they were trying to describe an account. What is the full user agent string of the application that originated the request? So back here to the same question is, here we will keep the query the same, but we will remove the event name and replace that with an event name that equals to describe an account. Event name, Describe an account. Let's see if there's yeah. Describe account attributes. We should only have one. Yeah, one event. If you look at the details, you see the user agent is Elastic Wolf five one six, which makes the which marks the end of this task. I hope you found this task helpful, and in the upcoming videos we will continue on with the room. Thank you for watching.